Uh, I'm a very lucky man because I have a girlfriend. A lot of times, you know, comics say that as a way to like shit on their significant other, but uh, I love my girlfriend. She saved me from a life of being single. I'm a pothead. I'm terrible at being single. It's not good to meet new people when you're always scared and hungry. <laughs> I wasn't very debonair. If a girl wanted to successfully hit on me, she just had to slowly approach with a handful of trail mix. Just like, <laughs> oh, you're a big guy, aren't you? No. With those yogurt clusters? Okay. My, before I met my girlfriend, my best friend tried setting me up with one of her friends, and that's always a disaster. We got set up on a date. We were gonna go out. The night before, the girl texts me, is it a problem if I bring my two cats? I think that's the definition of a problem. <laughs> why, why would that ever be a good idea to bring two of the most agile animals to a first encounter? I do appreciate she led with crazy though. That was very nice. It's refreshing, right off the jump, like I'm a cat lady. And you're like, hmm, we'll deal with that. <laughs> that's what dating should be. You should lead with crazy. Don't lie to someone and then seven months in they realize you're a garbage dump. <laughs> so we should just say the craziest shit and see who sticks around. Right on the first date, be like, how do you feel about night terrors? Because <laughs> if this goes well in three months, I will wake you up screaming at nothing. <laughs> I hope you have a solid defense out of a deep sleep because I'm about to go buck fucking wild. So it's almost worse sometimes to witness someone have a night terror than it is to have a night terror because people who have night terrors, they don't really remember them. They wake up like werewolves with their clothes torn. Just like, what happened last night? And then you're just standing there like, woo! You've got some demons. Uh, I'd speak to someone professionally. First time I ever saw someone have a night terror, I was 12 years old. I was spending the night at my best friend's house. Uh, I was a 12 year old boy, so I was a boner factory at that point. <laughs> that's not politically incorrect, that's science. It's what 12 year old boys do. It's like boner after boner. It's exhausting. Thank God it happens then and not now or else I just want to end it. I'd be like, another boner? <laughs> I have a meeting. <laughs> Can't go in there all boned up. <laughs> so I'm spending the night at my best friend's house. I'm asleep on the floor. He's asleep on his bed around three o'clock in the morning out of nowhere. He jumps up on his bed and starts losing his shit like, ah! Ah! I wake up terrified, confused, fully aroused, <laughs> and then right back to confused. I have no clue what's happening. Is he yelling because I have a boner? <laughs> Even worse, do I have a boner because he's yelling? I don't know. I'm scared and hard. <laughs> he's just like, ah, ah, I'm like, ah, ah. Nothing happened, his parents came in, they calmed him down, and it was awkward for six years. <laughs> we graduated high school, I was like, later, sleep psycho, have fun with all that. I think back to that, though, now as a 34-year-old man, and I dodged such a bullet. I got so lucky that, in some way, that didn't end up being like a real messed up sexual fetish. Cause that's right when I was being formed. That's right when I was being programmed. I was, some tiny thing different happens. I go down a dark road. <laughs> like as he's yelling at me and I have a boner, if like a light breeze hits the back of my neck, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going through my thirties, meeting up with prostitutes at roadside motels. Like, here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> We're both gonna go to bed. You're gonna lose your shit. I'll wake up harder than a diamond and we'll fuck this out. <laughs> Just some grizzled prostitutes like, oh, you want the night terror? Okay. <laughs> yeah, just, just throw. I'm a, big, uh, I'm a big fan of the sport of boxing. I love boxing. Not a lot of people do anymore, but I love it. I like watching the tinier fighters, like the 96 pound guys just beat the shit out of each other. And they're so tiny, but they just beat the shit out of each other. My favorite's always like the, the post-fight interview in the ring where there's a translator and they're like, Luis, 
In the 11th round, you knew the fight was going to be over. When did you know you have him? And he's like. And then the translator steps in. He's like, my hands are weapons from God. I destroy everything I touch. You're like, that does not match that voice whatsoever. He's like. His family is lucky I let him leave alive. I am the archangel of death. All praise be to Jesus Christ. All right, that's all. All right, thank you guys very much. Have a good night.